Hello, Internet. It is a beautiful morning here in St. Louis, Missouri, and today we're doing something very different. Um, if it is a morning when I post this video, I'm sorry. Uh, I have to repost my other videos, so I'm like spending a lot of time today editing. Uh, but I do assure you that this was recorded in the morning. Um, today's video is a special kind of video. We will be talking about something that's more of a serious topic, but it's not really that serious. Nothing's ever that serious. But we do have the Dr. Phil stamp of approval and we will be drawing in the background there's a series i'm going to start doing where i talk about more serious topics and i draw in the background today's drawing is um history's most famous and influential ghost and the reason why we are drawing him is because the topic of today is ghosting great segue king um so if you do not know what ghosting is ghosting as defined by dictionary.com is the practice of ending a personal relationship with someone by suddenly and without explanation withdrawing from all communication. And the example given is, I thought ghosting was a horrible dating habit reserved for casual flings. That's not a very good example to use it in. But um, ghosting is a very interesting thing, right? Um, in the past, that is not something that you would hear very often, like 10 years ago. If someone were ghosted, it would kind of bring out worry, like, oh, my God, what's probably what's what's happened to them? Are they dead? What's going on? You know, it bring out a lot of concern. But nowadays, it's very commonplace. It's very, you know, it's it's a common practice that's very heavily defended. And the thing with ghosting is. If you were the person who is ghosted, you probably feel really bad you know some of you some people might not care because it's happened so often but the first time of it happening you're probably worried the second time of it happening if you found out the person was good you know the person is still posting on their socials and everything there is a sense of 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 pain of of non-clarity that hits you and if you're the person who ghosted someone you probably don't even care you probably didn't even notice um, you feel entitled to it, and 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 why not? You know, you, 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 your your freedom of speech, freedom of 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 decision. You can do whatever you want. You know, no response is a response. I want you to pay attention to that. No response is a response. That is something that I've heard very often nowadays. Uh, it's something that is used multiple times to defend ghosting. No response is a response, which in itself is an enigma. And if you are someone who said this before, I'm sorry, but this is a very stupid argument. Um, no response in all terms of English is not a response. It's a negative response. It is not a response. A response is replying to someone. If you feel like ending a relationship, if someone you're you're not interested in them that anymore you you um you don't feel like talking to them anymore because you're talking to somebody else you started a relationship and this person is constantly messaging you why do you think the appropriate way to deal with the situation is just continuously to ignore them in defense of this i do know that there are many people male and female most male in the heterosexual community and the homosexual community who would take a denial, a, 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 a rejection as fuel to insult the person who rejected them to, to why did you lead me on? You're a piece of shit, da 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 da, -da. you bitch, you, you're nothing, whatever. And there are some people who see this as like, oh no, now... I, I maybe if I am persistent, they will like me again. Maybe maybe I did something wrong. It, it can't be just them not interested. I did something wrong. They must like me again if I continue to try. So there are people who don't take rejection well and will continue. And if that is your excuse um, for not leaving a response for someone who generally has no idea why you have stopped speaking to them, then I'm sorry, but that's not a good excuse. Because either way, you're going to get that. The true reason is, is that you lack the skill set 
for confrontation. You are afraid of confrontation. Because either way, you're going to have people who are persistent. Either way, you're going to have people who are insulting you. Whether you give them a response or you don't give them a response, the difference is if you give a response, there is a higher chance of this person just leaving you alone. I have had girls who have told me, I'm sorry, I'm not interested in continuing this any further. And some of them, a lot of them, I have just been like, oh, okay, um, understood. And we just stopped talking. And I do admit there have been some where I did ask, oh, what exactly did I do wrong? Because we were, you know, we were talking pretty fluently and everything was going good. And at that point, that's when I got ghosted, which they might just not have been interested, which is still, it's still terrible, but they might have just not been interested. And I should have just taken that as a rejection and kept moving. But I've also had people who I had been talking to for a very long period of time and things had been going well and all of a sudden you just disappear. And I had left it for a while and still nothing, no response to my messages. And I had reached out and worry on like a different app. And some people might call me a simp for that. You know, this, this is previous behavior. And all of a sudden I'm blocked. And that's very commonplace. And there are girls who defend that. There are guys who, def well, I don't know of any guys who defend this, but I'm sure there are. Um, but there are people who defend that behavior. And I don't think that's the right way to think. I don't think that's the right way to act. Now, what sparked this um, dialogue is I recently got back into online dating. Uh, I started this, I started online dating last year. Um, when I moved to St. Louis, actually, because I didn't know anyone here. So I started online dating and I've recently gotten back to it. And something interesting is the girl that I first matched with ever on a dating app, she found me on this uh, dating app as a hinge. So if someone likes you, you can see that person. She found me on that dating app and she liked me again. And I messaged her. And here's the thing. I messaged her, what is wrong with her? <laughs> and she didn't respond. And you might be wondering why I messaged her that. It's because when I first matched with her ever, which is last year, we had good conversation. I got her Instagram, her phone number, her Snapchat. We had plans to go on dates so she can show me around. We had plenty of plans and she just ghosted me. And I left her alone. And then I continued using Tinder and then I matched with no, and then I started using Hinge, and then she found me on that. She liked me, and I matched with her, and I talk, tried to talk to her on there, where she never responded. I stopped using those dating apps, and then three months later, I started using them again, and she found me on Hinge again, matched me, and didn't say anything. I didn't say anything to her either, and she also liked me on Tinder as well. I then reached out to her on Instagram to talk to her, and we had a normal conversation, and she informed me that she wasn't really interested in talking to anyone or even like meeting any new friends. So there was no point in, in going forth with, you know, talking to this person. I didn't block her or anything, but I left it. And so when I started using the dating apps again recently, she found me again and she matched me. And that's why I asked her what's wrong with her. And I tried to call her, but she denied my call and never even message back and I just felt is this like some kind of game like why is this person doing this if you're if you ever online dated then you're used to being ghosted um I have plenty of matches oh toot toot there's my horn going but the interesting thing about it is out of all those matches I have 50% will respond and 30% will eventually ghost me now, I don't understand that because all these people, none of those matches will unmatch me. If you have no interest in talking to someone, why not just unmatch them so they definitely know that? Why keep them there? Now, I don't know why I'm speaking like this. <laughs> um, so a lot of girls have told me, a lot of my female friends have told me that girls like to match a lot of guys and keep uh, only message two at a time. And if it doesn't go well with those two, go to the next two and so on. But they keep matching. 
And honestly, I think that's a very stupid way of doing things. Um, the, 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 the way I know, and, and, and guys probably, some guys probably do that. Like behavior isn't something that is solely on gender, but it's just a lot of girls. I know this is like the trend with them. Um, and for guys, the trend is match a lot of people and message all of them. But the person who responds the best and the person who responds the quickest is the person that they go on a date with. And during that date, if it goes well, they start to get more serious with the person while continuously talking to those other people. And if it ends up being something serious, some guys will keep those people on the side. But other guys will end things with those people and keep to the one girl that they were talking to. Unless if they were just interested in hooking up, then they would just hook up with that one person and then go to the next that they were talking to. And honestly, if you're on the receiving end, that's up to you to figure out if they are just someone that wants to hook up or not. You know, get your situation clear immediately. Don't hook up on the first day. But if you are a, a person who the guy does still dupe you at the end, I'm sorry for that. But yes, that is a situation. Uh, so they talk to people in parallel. And I find that to be a better approach. If you're a match with someone, you have that initial attraction to them. And so there is that spark of excitement. So why not have a conversation and get to know that person beyond just their looks? If you're not going to do that, then what is the point of having that person in your list of potential dates, I guess? Um, so this is just something that I don't see a very reasonable point in. And if you ever use the excuse of no response is a response, I genuinely think you are stupid or you are just incapable of handling confrontation. Um... I'm sorry, this is not something that was made in a state of anger. This is actually a very calm situation. Um, nothing in this life is that serious. I just feel this kind of behavior is becoming more and more commonplace. And so it's just something I wanted to talk about. If you feel that ghosting is justified, please let me know in the comments. L tell me tell me why you think that. Let me, uh, let me get your perspective on this. Um, you know, anyone's allowed to think what they think. Uh, but... Thank you for watching. Uh, let me know what you want me to draw next time. Let me know what kind of topic you'd like me to talk about next time. Otherwise, I just do what I feel I should do and just talk maybe about my love life. But I will be coming back with the uh, Says About You series. So thank you for listening, and I will see you in the next one. Have a great one. Peace.